Thank you, madam. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm going to speak about wood. I'm also going to speak about a person who has mastered uh, wood and through the medium of design brought it to us you know, reveal some very interesting stories. So bear with me, I'm try to, I will stay within the time since I've uh, evolved this. I'm really titling it The Evolution of a Design Master. And Gajanand Upadhyaya is a furniture designer, an architect and a teacher who taught in India. But I'm, I will go through a short, very brief uh, bio profile. Born in 1934, he's, 19, he's now, what, 77 years old, still active and working in Ahmedabad and you will see as you go what he has done. A little bit about his background, trained in architecture in Baroda at the MSU, uh, started working in his village, came to Ahmedabad and joined the National Institute of Design in 1962, the school, the first design school that was set up in India in 1961, so he was one of the early uh, you know, uh, designers to join there. And then he went, he was sent to Denmark to study in 66. But then after his study, he joined the school, the Royal Danish Academy there, stayed on till 74, came back to India to teach at an ID uh, from 76 till he retired in uh, 96. And then he's joined, he had a second career, joined a local architect in Ahmedabad, uh, the very large architectural uh, practice to design interiors and furniture for large programs, which I'll show you some of those. And he's also helped set up a new uh, company for a designer store called the 3D Workshop. So early beginnings, this is from 1964. He had the opportunity at NID to work with some of the world's leading designers. This was uh, a work which he had done with Hans Gugello. Uh, if you're familiar with the history of design, Hans Gugello, uh, was a, a design teacher and a designer at the Ulm School of Design in Germany and he visited uh, NID and this was typically a product of making, you know, working with the uh, wood but converting it in very fine construction. I have a lot of materials so I'm going to go through with it but this presentation is available on my blog. You can download it at any time and uh, you will have you will have a copy of it. In 64, uh, the National Institute of Design uh, hosted Charles and Ray Eames, who are uh, international American designers, famous for their for the Eames chair and so on, to come to India to design the Nehru exhibition. They used wood a lot, and they used round poles for structures. And there were a lot of material lying around on campus. So what Upadhyaya did was put this together as a young designer and make an application out of it. So you had turned wood furniture but made from poles which were uh, made ready at that time. In, in 62-63, I am the third person mentioning George Nakashima here. This are furniture done by George Nakashima and they were licensed to the National Institute of Design to be produced in the workshop. Why Nakashima? Because somehow his understanding of wood was so deep and we respected that and when he came to the institute, he worked over there. But how does that connect with Upadhyaya? Because Upadhyaya actually worked with him. He spent three months in India, went, down, went around, he travelled with him and the drawing that you see here was actually drawn by Upadhyaya of Nakashima cabinet. So you can see the kind of care and detailing that went into uh, a Nakashima piece. If you want to make a dovetail joint, how would you build it? The top right hand corner has the detail of you drill, what kind of saw do you use very precise way of constructing. It's not by chance that a good fine piece of furniture is constructed. There's a lot of thought that goes into it. There's extremely fine detailing. Sometimes the extent of detailing that architects miss, we're talking about fractions of millimeter of precision. And here was furniture that was being built partly by use of very sophisticated machines available at that time in our workshop. And uh, they were produced for many years at the institute. So you had two cabinets. Just to see that this is a grounding and a training, working with Eames, working with uh, Nakashima closely and there were half a dozen people at the institute at that time. So there were people traveling in and the kind of interaction that he had. And then in Denmark, he worked with Paul Kerom. He was a student first and then joined him as a faculty member. And this is a stool that Upadhyaya had developed 
in nothing. What is significant about this tool? Because if you look at the folding stool, and the Danes make a lot of folding stools, everybody tries to make a new chair. Why? Because it's such a complex piece of equipment that you need to sit on. But the interesting thing here is you have a large wide seat, but it's low and if you make a seat with a diagonal member in wood, you'll see that the member will be far too long and structurally it's not a good idea to do that. So here he solved a structural problem along with the folding and the dimensional and the elegance and all these things and this particular piece was done at the Royal Danish Academy when he was a student there. This was his uh, diploma uh, project and it's on display along with Paul Keram's work in a permanent collection in the museum there. He continued to work in Denmark and in his professional work developed a whole range of products and this is a folding deck chair which used sterling strings and wood, a combination of these two materials and he continued to do a lot of folded and folding furniture. Then he came to an idea as I mentioned in 76. There was a challenge and we are looking at economical furniture using not, not exotic timbers, non-exotic timbers. So in fact he experimented with chill pine, with uh, you know, uh, poon wood, with nandi wood. I am talking of the you know, local names of species which are available and these are not usually used for furniture. So he said let's explore some of those dimensions. Then if you are changing the timber, how do you change proportions, how do you change dimensions, how do you change construction details, these are dimensions that he went. So when I spoke to, and this, uh, when I was invited to speak at this conference, I decided that this would be a good topic for me to get into. So I actually spent the last one month interacting with him, sitting with him on about eight sessions, which I videotaped, along with my conversations with him, pulled out old material and culled through all the material that he's done in wood. So I will explain some of these drawings. And the drawings that you're seeing here, are drawings done by students at the National Institute of Design. These were done in my class many years ago as analysis of Upadhyaya's furniture for them to understand fine detailing and so on. Some of these early prototypes are still in use today. For instance, last week I was walking around the campus and I found that somebody was repairing the cane seats of an old chair. And from this, the way of working, he actually makes several prototypes several models and several versions of it before he finalizes on one and then that goes into serial production. So the one that goes into production is a very refined piece of furniture where the specifications are rolled out. So it is not as if we know what will be the end product before we start a journey of designing. It's an unknown area but you discover it through a process of experimentation, exchange and building. This is the product that actually went into production and this piece for instance was used, when I say went into production, went into batch production, I think a few hundred pieces were made and they have been used on campus at NID since the 90s for faculty rooms. And this was done, you know, in a way that if you look at the armrest for instance, instead of using a larger piece of wood, he's actually done it by combining two pieces of wood. So that you get a larger surface to rest your arm on. So there is an economics of dimension there although you have taken and all of these are machine made. This is another version that was done for the NID uh, library and these are stackable, highly stackable. Now this has gone into production at two other uh, companies in India. This is a uh, chair that he had done for the NID hostel. This is not a folding chair. But the reason why it's been configured this way is that he knew that it had to be sturdy, it would be used very rough and these are still in use almost 15-20 years after the hostels were built. The boys hostel, you know, I mean it's not, it's the men's hostel that, you know, needed this furniture. There's a whole range of items, it's not just the chair but a related set of items. And the detailing that is interesting, I'll come back to an analysis of some of these things when we go through and see some more of his work. The way he works, this is a short lecture, so I, I, I'm proposing that we'll do a major book on him actually that this will go on. He's done wooden furniture, he's done metal furniture, he's done bamboo furniture and he has the, he is also doing some architecture now with the, you know, uh, Bimal Patel and the, uh, the HCP there. This for instance is modular and knockdown. This was a canvas chair where 
the additional tensioning was possible by adjusting bolts. And there is some hardware that is used in it. But the, it's primarily a wooden chair. And the detailing over here is very interesting. If you look at the seat member and the back, the seat is shaped in such a way that when you sit on the canvas, the canvas sags. It's always it's natural for the thing to move. But it's extremely comfortable. You don't come into contact with the wood because the wood has been shaped from the inside out. So the back is strong and wide. The, as the front, it is tapering in like this so that you get more space for your body. So there's ergonomics, uh, structure, material, form, a synthesis of, um, of many uh, things which have gone into this. And uh, the detailing that's been done. You can see this again in the new stool that he had developed without hardware. There is no hardware used over here. So the canvas and the canvas tape that is used. Then there was a project in uh, the late 90s to develop the Gujarat High Court. And the entire furniture for the High Court, uh, the benches, the out outdoor things, all were done in wood. And this is a large bench which can accommodate eight, eight people, you know. So a single gang width. So you can imagine the structural stability that would be required to support eight people in a wooden beam. There's a metal truss at the bottom, but that's not significant. I think it's the back backrest plane that actually is taking bulk of the load when you're actually having a you know large truss which is standing vertically and the way it has been. There's a lot of tradition in the construction that is there. At the same time, it is you know, modern and the expression is extremely clear. This shows the High Court, Gujarat High Court, the main hall in Gujarat High Court with a mural in the back. So this is facing towards the back and that is a view towards the three judge bench in front. So you can see the wooden construction there. So Padia retired from thing and most people would say, okay, then in 96, that's the end of a long journey. He has been prolific and plenty of work had been done. But no, then he started a second career. He's designed as much in the you know 10-15 uh, years now that he had done in the previous 20 years there's a huge body of work which i can't show all of it here and that's the with his partner who is an architect and a furniture maker in Ahmedabad. they built a four four story building which is a shop where they actually market and uh, deal with products so he's a working partner of sorts with them so you can see some of the displays at the shop and products are coming out every day but how does he work? It's intellectual. It is with his hands. He's a fine craftsman, cabinet maker himself. He makes models and uh, inspirational for his students. Many of his students have started furniture companies around India and he makes sketches by hand. Some of the sketches. This is the most recent chair that he's done for NID's new building in Gandhinagar. There's a, if you, it's an echo of the first chair, the, you know, the low cost, experiment that was done way back in the 80s and now he's built it again and there is Upadhyaya with the single seater and then the two seater there. Drawings is one way his sketches, he's got stacks of sketches so if you imagine that it's like one sketch and you get a carpenter to make it, no that's not the way to do it it's refined through orthographic through you know structural explorations through some kind of three-dimensional things. Each detail is drawn a thousand times before you actually decide on the fineness of proportion, the judgment that you make. So I asked him, what are the uh, you know, messages that you give out to your students? He said, one is geometry, the core idea of understanding proportions, form. Second is structure and the behavior of material and the synthesis and your worldview is so important to see how does it fit today. How does it fit with the world? So how do you make it actually work? So these are the kind of qualities that he brings. And the other way is you don't try everything in full size material. These are all scale models. They also a number of things are tried out in scale models which are never built. This uh, turned wood bed has never been built but there's a scale model that was made and tested. He also worked with me on bamboo and this is from the Tripura you know, bamboo project that we did way back in 86, 88. This is his uh, offerings. I have another set of things which I had done myself, which I'm not showing here. And this was last week in his office when we sat together to talk. So he's, he would have loved to be here, but I thought it will be good to talk about the evolution of a master and to understand this kind of quality that we get. I haven't heard the bell yet. So I think there it goes. Yeah. 
So, um, uh, a quick journey taking you through this and you can just see, you know, the range of work. But this is a fraction of his work, a small section. In my view, I would place him with the greats whom he had worked with. Paul Karam, uh, Nakashima, masters of that caliber and he has actually arrived there through a journey himself. So I think uh, one of my uh, former colleagues is also here, Balram. So you would, uh, you know, perhaps add if there are any other questions in the corridor, we'll talk about Upadhyaya. And many of Upadhyaya's students are here. For instance, right here in Bangalore, there are two companies which are built by his students. One is called Quetzal, Quetzal, and which is fairly large and do doing wood and other work. The other one is Dovetail. Both of them are doing very well in thing. Thank you very much.